Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are a farmer, peacefully working the soil, planting your crops. While above you, deadly as a vulture, a man is descending who will carry you away to his lair. A place from which there is no escape. So listen now as Escape brings you Stacey O'Monier's exciting story, A Source of Irritation. You know, whenever the talk turns to the last war and who won it between the correspondents at the Overseas Press Club on Fleet Street, it becomes a hot two-way fight between the Americans and the Englishmen. Myself, I'm a shy man. I keep out of it and order myself a shot of Benedictine and brandy. But privately, I have my own candidate. You can take it for what it's worth, but I'd nominate old Sam Gates. I know about Sam because I had occasion to cover the story for the Times. It was during the days of the Blitzkrieg. The Netherlands, Norway, and Belgium had already fallen before the German panzer divisions. And the British Expeditionary Force was doing its grim best to help out in France. Old Sam Gates was on Mr. Dodge's farm in Halvesham, hoeing turnips and waiting for his niece Aggie, who arrived twice daily, at dawn and at tea time, with his parcel of food. Hello, Uncle. Oh, hello, Aggie. Oh, well, Uncle, is there any news? <laughs> you asked me the same question yesterday. Did I? Yes, and the day before that. Well, it's another day. Any news today? <laughs> news? What do you want, girl? What news should there be? Well, no harm asking. You have my food? Here you are, Uncle. <laughs> we cut open a new cheese for you. Yeah, well, I'll have a taste of it right now. Did you hear Mrs. Cobing's fowl got out last night? Hmm. And Mr. Dodge wants you to kill another pig tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, look. It's an aeroplane, Uncle. Yeah, I've got ears. <laughs> Bloody nuisances of the war, these aeroplanes. Ours and theirs. Oh, Uncle, did you know that Mrs. Hardwick's nephew Clarence has joined up? He's flying a spitfire. <laughs> Well, I knew he'd never amount to much. Well, Mrs. Hardwick says that... Aggie girl, the cows need milking. Oh, all right, Uncle. You needn't get cross. I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody morning. If it ain't the girl, it's the airy planes. Well, old Sam Gates went back to hoeing his turnips and muttering to himself about this fool world and its inhabitants. But it wasn't an hour later that his thoughts were interrupted by another plane overhead. He waited for it to go away, but it didn't. And what he heard made him look up, startled. A plane was coming down with a Nazi swastika clearly marked on its side. And it was coming down on his field. Oi! Hey there! This ain't no flying field! Stop! Can't you hear me? You can't land in them turnips. I just hold them. Oh, you... You there. Oh, you've kicked up 25 yards of Mr. Dodge's good Swedes. And what are you going to do about it? Well, grandfather, stand back there where you are, I shoot. Why, you've no right to come barging in here with that gun. 
Hey, what are you doing on English soil, anyways? Another word, then I finish you. Keep your hands in the air and walk to me. <laughs> Schnell, be quick. <laughs> Uh, now, what do you want of me? No questions. Closer. There. I'll... I'll... Ach, no. Paul. Paul Juppert. I'll, I'll Hitler. I'll Hitler, me foot. I'm not much in favor of Mr. Hitler. What are you talking about, Herr Juppert? I ain't no one called Herr Juppert. And what's more, I don't want to be. Eh? One moment. What do you think? Hey, why? My beard ain't for tugging. You've been and gone and lost your mind. Quiet. You. What is your name? Yeah, Sam Gates. And who are you? Never mind. Lie down. <laughs> Keep your face in the ground. Are you, are you going to shoot me? Englander Schweinhund. Hey, do as I say. Uh, I suppose I'll have to. <laughs> Old Sam Gates did as he was told, and the pilot went to work on the engine of his photo reconnaissance plane. He located his trouble in a clogged fuel line and had it prepared in a few minutes. Then he looked at the old man and smiled grimly. You, old man, get in the plane. Well, what are you talking about? I ain't imitating fish nor bird. A man's two feet belong on the ground, and that's where mine is staying. No discussion. Get in or I shoot. Well, what do you want me for? I, I... Get in. <laughs> you are going back with me. What is the matter, old grandfather? You are so pale. Uh, what if I am? I ain't been in the hands of a madman before. I want to be set down this minute. I can't be flying about the country with hoeing still to do and Mr. Dodgy's parnips only half thinned. Turn it. <laughs> hey, hey, what's that noise from? You're Englishmen. They are shooting at us. Ooh. Better say your prayers, Grandfather. Oh, I've been praying, but I can't decide whether I want the Almighty to strike you down or save me. The right wing tip shot away, the fuselage rent with holes as big as a man's fist. The Nazi reconnaissance plane, nevertheless, remained miraculously aloft. Nada Haussmann, the pilot, nor old Sam Gates was hurt. Sam was being spared for other things. Within minutes, they had crossed the channel and were gliding downwards. Sam knew by the roofs of the houses, the trees and streams that he was in a foreign country. When they landed, Sam found himself behind German lines in France. The swastikas, the sea of unfamiliar faces shouting at each other in heathen gibberish, filled the old man with a strange dread. But he made up his mind to stick it through as he walked stiffly in front of the pilot's prodding pistol until they reached a zinc-roofed building and went in. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going as far as I can. That airplane ride shook me up a bit. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Give it in house, Mr. General von Schlegel. General is occupied, Herr Kapitän. I must see him. Tomorrow morning. It is a matter of extreme urgency. Take me to him immediately. Very well, Herr Kapitän. Herr Kapitän Hausmann. Herr General. Get the pipe out of your mouth. Stand at attention, Grandfather. <laughs> Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. <laughs> now, what is the meaning of this house, man? Who is this old farmer? I brought him from England, Herr General. Houseman, have you gone mad? Ah, that he has. Mad as a March hare. Without a by your leave, he comes thundering out of the sky, kicking up 25 yards of good turnips, and snatches me from the honest toil to go... Flying off with him. Quiet, you. Dear General, 
Please look at him closely. What do you expect me to see, Houseman? No. Eh? Paul Joubert. I never heard of any Paul Joubert. My name is Sam Gates, and as much as your flying machine grinds a man's bones to dust, I'll expect you to have one deliver me safe and sound to Mr. Dodgy's farm on my native soil, or the, the king will hear of this. This is not Paul? No, Herr General. Joubert is now a gardener at the convent of St. Eloise. It my it on and all. 100 feet from British Field Headquarters in Paris. I know where he is supposed to be. What is the point of all this, Houseman? Well, Paul Juppert has practically become the eyes and ears of the German army. He delivered us the complete blueprints of the Maginot Line and every move the England has made. You do not have to sing Paul's praises to me. I am well aware he is the best spy in the Third Reich. But the Englanders know that too. They put a reward of 10,000 pounds on his head. Twice they have captured him, and each time he has slipped from their fingers. They've gone so far as to distribute his photograph to all commanding officers in their states. Houseman, you are pondering the obvious. Now, what about this old farmer? He and uh, Paul Juppert are exact identical in appearance. Well? I, um, I don't want grandfather over here. But uh, suppose, Herr General, mm. they found the dead body of Paul Juppé. Houseman, you may have something there. I am certain of it. Put grandfather in one of our uniforms, which Juppé's identity card in his pocket, and allow the Englanders to find him dead behind our line. Excellent. The English will spread the word of Paul's death to the other allies, and the real Paul Juppert will be free to continue his labors undisturbed. <laughs> Hausmann, you are a clever man. Danke, Herr General. Do not worry, Hausmann. Word of this will reach the Fuhrer himself. <laughs> but now we do not have a moment to lose. The English are attacking Hill 701, which we are abandoning within the hour to straighten our lines. The perfect place for our little plan. Take up a lieutenant shoots with you. Yeah, my dear. Keep the farm at the front lines until the order for retreat is given. Then shoot him, but do not disfigure him. And be sure to lay him out face upwards. I understand perfect. Proceed immediately, houseman. I'll Hitler. I'll Hitler. <laughs> And then old Sam was forced into a Nazi officer's field uniform, a helmet placed on his head, and before he knew where he was going, he found himself at the front. Look, uh, my legs are aching. When am I going back to my turnips? You'll be back to the soil quite soon. Uh, Captain, huh? we are in the forward area now, and the retreat has started. Well, I ain't going no further. No. You're not about to take me back to Mr. Dodge's farm, and it makes no difference to me whether you shoot me or I get blown to bits by one of them exploding things. No, oh, I'll have me a last pipe full of tobacco either way. Oh, dread of this fucking chin keeps falling over my eyes. Keep moving and keep that helmet on your head. Down! Yeah, come on, that was too close. They have the range. Let us shoot him and get out of here. Yeah. All right, grandfather. You can have your pipe full of smoke now. Are you ready, shoot? Yeah, well. Hey, fire! We will return to escape in just a moment. But first... Answering the call of the sick and the distressed at home and at the battlefield is the job of the Red Cross. This month, the Red Cross is asking for contributions to carry on this wonderful work for another year. Can we do less than answer the call ourselves? Give as much as you can to the American Red Cross. And now, back to Escape. <laughs> Thank you. 
That same day, the sun was hot in the midday sky. As an hour later, a forward patrol of English Tommies rounded Hill 701 and saw the bodies of Lieutenant Schutz, Captain Hausman, and behind a rock, old Sam Gates, lying with his pipe still in his hand. They were about to move on when the corporal, coming up from the rear, stopped them. Hold on a minute. What's up, Corporal? We've got to get back to battalion headquarters. Now, the one there with the pipe seems to be breathing. Well, leave him to the aid boys. They'll be along in a bit. Right-o, Sergeant, but he might be a pretty big fish. That's headquarters insignia he's wearing. All right, Simpson. See if we can bring him around. But we'll have to be quick about it. Yeah, oh. yeah the sun must have struck me down. Ooh. Give me an awful set of dreams. Oh, my poor red. Can't make out what he's saying. Go on. Give him an hand. Get him up. We've got to get a move on. Is this the prisoner, Sergeant? Yes, sir. He's a bit shaken, but otherwise he's all right, sir. Seems to understand English. Uh, name? Uh, Sam Gates. A rank? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> rank, army rank. Uh, well, I've nothing to do with any armies. Uh, you mind telling me where the devil I am? Huh? He speaks English like a native. Your identification card, please. Uh, eh? Zigdina Identification Carta. Look here, what are you talking Nazi for? You're an Englishman, same as I I'll am. Search him, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Here you are, sir. Uh, thank you, Sergeant. Huh. Huh. Well, the master spy himself, Paul <laughs> Lupin. Well, you won't get away from us this time, Paul. Well, has the whole world gone daft? My name is Sam Gates, and I was christened so by me maiden Aunt Christina. And I'm no Paul Joe Peer, and I never was. <laughs> good show, Paul, good show. My name ain't Paul. I, I can tell you where I was born and bred and who my wife yes, is. Yes, I'm and... sure you've got your story worked out to the last detail, but it won't do you a bit of good. You were tried by our court-martial September last, and the verdict still holds. You're going to be executed as soon as possible. Uh, make out the order of execution, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. And you better take the staff car and run down to division headquarters and have General Cartwright sign it. We really don't have much time, sir. The battalion has orders to move forward. Can't you proceed on your own authority? Uh, not with General Cartwright. He worked his way up through the ranks and he never quite got over it. Yes, sir. He doesn't like it much if you get your officer's commission out of the university. I know. <laughs> well, and in particular, he's never forgiven me for having graduated from Oxford. Well, capturing two pairs is going to be quite a feather in your cap, sir. Uh, yes. Well, I'll get going, Lieutenant. The general wants to witness the execution. Tell him we'll be over at the bombed-out farmhouse. Yes, sir. Squad, halt! Now, there won't be any delay, men. Sergeant, Corporal, advance the prisoner to the wall. Keep your rifles cocked. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Paul Juper, have you anything to say before the sentence is executed? My name is Sam Gates, and if I was 20 years younger, I'd give you a punch in the ruddy eye. Why, you read me guilty before I opened my mouth. You can go to bloody blue blazes. Oh, very well. Is there any last request you have to make? Ah, I want to smoke out a last pipe full of tobacco in peace and quiet. And I don't want none of that white cloth blinding me eyes. A request granted. Uh, begging your pardon, sir, but the general's driven up. All right, Sergeant. All right, Morsley. What's this all about? Is that Paul Juper? Yes, sir. My most remarkable man. He not only bothered to learn English, but he even went to the trouble of mastering our local dialects. Calls himself Sam Gates. Had me fooled at first, sir, but I kept after the scent. Bring the prisoner air. Uh, right, sir. But I'm afraid you won't get much out of him. He sticks to his own story. Sergeant, march the prisoner forward. Say your name is Sam Gates? It is. And if you had any sense, you'd believe me. 
I was minding my business owing Mr. Dodge's turnips in Alversham when this daft aviator comes swooping down in his airy plane, tearing up good sweets, and he snatches me away with him. <laughs> Kidnapped, eh? And how did you manage to get into a Nazi's officer's uniform? Explain that. Oh, they was hatching something, that's what. They forced me to wear a tin bucket and a green soldier's suit and made me go along with them. Aren't we wasting time, sir? We found your pair's identification card in his pocket. I told you they was hatching something. They put it in my pocket. Uh, how much do you expect us to believe? Oh, oh, I don't ask you to believe anything at all. We'll get to the truth soon enough. Where were you born? Oh, Albersham. Three miles from Mr. Dodgy's farm and... What's more, I haven't set foot out of the country except once to visit the flower show at the market, Roughborough. And today, to go flying about with that madman... Alvisham, eh? <laughs> the perfect characterization. A pity to execute so fine an actor. Yeah. Married? Yes, I be. And what's your wife's maiden name? Annie Hatchet, as everyone in Alvisham knows. Good show. Who did you say you worked for? Mr. Dodge. Charlie Dodge. And he raises horses and pigs besides. Uh, what you know, what do you grow besides turnips? Runner beans. <laughs> Good show. <laughs> Sam. Good show. Sam, then. Well, now see what you can do with this. What's the name of the local vicar? Ah. You don't know, do you? Oh, I know well enough. But mentioning him set me thinking that I promised the vicar a pot of beans, which I never did bring. Ooh. And what's worse, I ain't been to church in over a month or Sunday. Ah, maybe that's why the Almighty's placed my life in the hands of a pair of silly gaffers like the both of you. But you haven't told us who's the vicar's name, you know. It's the Reverend David Price, and a fine man he is. David Price? Wait a minute. I know a Reverend Price. He baptized my niece's cousin. What does he look like? Yeah, you're another one that's gone a bit loony, ain't you? Just answer the question. Well, if you know the Reverend, I don't have to tell you. He's got a mole on the left side of his face with a hair growing out of it. And his nose is crooked where a horse kicked him when he was four years old. By heavens, he's right. Uh, the same man. Well, what does that prove, sir? He might have met the man once. And he might not be Paul Jubert after all. Ah, now you're getting some sense at last. And if it's this Paul you're after... Well, I might be able to tell you where he's at. Where, old man? Well, he was a gardener somewhere. Don't rightly remember. I couldn't make out much of what they were saying. Uh, no fear. I'm afraid we might be able to check up on it, eh? Oh, it's Cop Boys coming to me. Uh, there's some convent near the army headquarters in Paris. Uh, ah, mighty no, that's it. Mountain on no? The convent sent a Louise Mountain on O? Colonel? Send a code message to Paris and order them to arrest the gardener immediately. Uh, yes, sir. And report back as soon as you hear anything. Mr. Gates, you come along with me. Colonel Mosby reporting to the general, sir. Well? Message from GHQ. They've arrested the gardener, sir. He is Paul Juppert, all right. You realize that Jupert might still be at large? Yes, sir. And Sam Gates here shot to death by his own people? Yes, sir. You're an Oxford man, aren't you, Moresby? Yes, sir. I never went to university. I worked my way up through the ranks. There's fish! Mr. Gates? My apologies. Yeah. Paul Jupitz is under arrest, and your honor is vindicated. Yeah, you'd have done better to listen to me in the first place. <laughs> oh, I certainly would, sir. But you'll hear more of this. The king is certain to award you the Victoria Cross or something of that sort. Now, in the meantime, uh, what can I do for you? Well, I want to get back home. That could be arranged. Yeah, but I'd like to get home at tea time. What time's that? Well, five o'clock or thereabouts. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes, sir. Ring up Wing Commander Jennings, RAF headquarters. Yes, sir. J. 
Jennings here. Uh, General Cartwright, sir. One moment. Wing Commander Jennings, sir. Right. Wing Commander Jennings speaking. This is General Cartwright. Have you flown the dispatch case out yet? Oh, not yet, sir. Good. There's a little matter which concerns the honor of the British Army. Oh, what's that, sir? A friend of mine's here, Sam Gates. He'd come over from England to give us some valuable information. And I promised to have him back at his farm at Aversham before tea time at five o'clock. Can you take a passenger? Well, I might be able to manage it, sir, if I can ever find the place. <laughs> At a few minutes before five, Wing Commander Jennings landed his light plane on Mr. Dodge's farm, being very careful to tear up as few turnips as possible. The commander shook hands with Sam and flew inland. The old man watched him and went slowly along and completed a line of turnips he had begun in the morning as he watched for his niece, Aggie, to arrive with his parcel of food. <laughs> Uncle. Yeah. Oh, hello, Aggie. Well, Uncle, is there any news? Ah, you asked me that very same question this morning. Did I? Yeah. Well, it's another day gone. Any news today? News? What do you want, girl? What news should there be? Ain't it enough to earn a bite to eat and a glass of beer without always wanting news, news, news? Heh! <laughs> Got you and your news. Now, you get back home and fetch the pot of runner beans to the vicar, and you'll be quick about it. All right, Uncle. Oi, uh, oi, and you tell him I'll be at church on Sunday next for sure. Under the direction of Anthony Ellis, Escape has brought you a source of irritation by Stacey Amonier, adapted by Meyer Dolinsky, and starring Ben Wright as Sam. Featured in the cast were High Everback, Paul Fries, Jack Crucian, Charlie Lung, Betty Harford, John Dodsworth, Alec Harford, Richard Peel, and Ramsey Hill. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... <laughs> You are in the suffocating depths of a jungle, listening to the words of your companion, while the native people, seemingly friendly and quiet, are awaiting the moment to strike, which when they do will mean a fate from which there is no escape. So listen next week when Escape brings you Somerset Mom's exciting story, The Outstation. <laughs> This Monday night, Walk a Mile, the fast, furious, funny quiz show starring Bill Cullen is yours for fun at the star's address. Be listening every Monday as Walk a Mile struts its stuff on most of these same CBS radio stations to make it an eventful evening side by side with Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts and Crime Classics. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, the stars still shine in the summer theater every Monday night on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>